This is the contacts tutorial, and it's my favorite tutorial because of the way Jaguar was designed. I believe the power of Jaguar can be seen in this very small tutorial about contacts. You have many options with contacts. I have a list here, and you'll see names Jennifer Jones, John Smith, Ken Jones, Mark Black, Jill Jackson, and then contact type. Client, prospect, client, agent, contractor. The reason I am showing you this is because most CRMs, customer relationship management programs of some kind, will have different types of like leads or accounts or things like that. And they can be converted into contacts or contacts can be ver converted into leads or can be converted into accounts. With our system, everything is a contact. This is so much simpler. So if you go to create a contact, click right there, this is gonna open up and it is defaulted to showing less information and, and also showing business information in the event that this would be a business. So what you can do is you can, I'm gonna just click cancel. You click right here, create contact. And when you do that, this opens up a new contact. And you'll see show less information is checked and show business information is also checked by default. You can uncheck that and that will not show these two fields, business type and business name. Okay. Show less information. If you check uncheck that box, then you'll see lots of fields open up. And the way Jaguar works is you can use as many fields as you want, or you can use as few fields as you want that's going to work for you. I often use a small number of fields, and then later on, I will do updates, and that's what this is for. If I want to do an update in contacts and say I have an opportunity I want to update, uh, then I'll save that for that particular person. But for right now, let's say this person is a prospect, which it defaults to automatically. You have the option of a personal contact. That's just somebody who is a friend of yours or whoever, but you want to have their information in your database. Then you've got a client. That's pretty obvious. Then you have a client prospect. Now, this is a person who is a client, but they're also looking to you to maybe get another product from you. So now they're not only a client, but a client prospect. A previous client, deceased, an agent. So if you have an agency or an FMO or whatever, then you can have your agents. You keep track of this way. A company. If you have an appointment, with Philadelphia American, and you want to call and talk to new business, then you will talk to a certain person in new business, then this would be a company contact that you would select. If you have an employee that works for you, you could have their information in there. If you have a contractor who makes phone calls for you, sets appointments, things like that, you can do that as well. A dead lead could be many different things. It does not mean deceased. That would be a deceased lead. That would be a person who's deceased. A dead lead would be like someone has a wrong number and they've threatened you if you call again, that type of thing. You don't want to have them in your database. That's just not good. The other thing you can do is you can put all the information you want in here. This is if you have lead notes that show up when you import a lead into the database. It might say John is 53 and his wife is 58. And you'll see those kind of things. I'm going to show you here in a little bit with actual contacts I created. And you can create a priority, one, two, three, four, five. One being the highest, five being the lowest. If you decide that you want to only call priority two people for a while or priority two and one, I'll show you how you do that. But you select whatever you want. Let's just say this is going to be a priority two. Best time to call? You have any? Mornings, early, mid to afternoon, late afternoon, evenings, weekends. And then you've got time frames that you can call. Why do I have it all the way from 9 to 10 p.m. and starting out from 7 to 8 a.m.? We know you aren't supposed to call people early in the morning or late at night. 
but you can if you use time zones. So this works out pretty cool. Preferred contact, this would be like if you have, uh, let's say this person right here would be Jim Ellison, but the preferred contact is Mary Jones, like if it's a business or whatever. That happens many times. The date lead received, you just put the date in there. Um, if you import it, it will automatically put that date in there for you if you match the fields for that. And I do have a tutorial on how to match fields for import. You have a gender here, a phone number, you can put a phone number in there, email. And if you want to put in one more number, one more email, you just hit the plus sign and you can add to it. If someone's working for you and they're a marketer, then you can just click on this right here. And in this case, I have Jill Jackson as a contractor. So I'm going to put Jill Jackson as the marketer. The source, you have all different kinds of options. Let's say it's a telemarketer. Snack and chat works good for people who do Medicare stuff. A festival or a local flea market. Door knocking, cold call, all different things. This is going to be your address information. Um, age, age as of date. This is pretty cool. If you know their age, and you know the date you're working with, obviously. Let's say their age is 53, and the time you talk to them is October of, of 2016. Well, if you don't know the date of birth, you can put that information in there. Once you get the date of birth, you can put that in here. And as soon as you put a date of birth in here, watch how I do that. You can click on those. Uh, let's just say we've got somebody who was born in 1965, July 15th, 1965. As soon as you put the date of birth in, then that other field of age and age as of disappear. Because the age doesn't stay the same, but the date of birth does. And this right here says, this little information thing says date of birth for DOB. If I get rid of that date of birth, you'll notice those other fields are going to reshow. See, here's the age. It says right here, this is the age as of current date if you don't know their date of birth. Pretty cool. Social security number, height and feet, inches, weight, tobacco status, driver's license number, driver's license state. You have all kinds of things there. Now, notice when I go up here and I make this contact type a company contact that a whole lot of fields are going to disappear it's also going to open up company contact opportunity so you click on that so you can open and close that now you got a company title let's say that you're working with somebody like i said who is in new business you just select new business and you can put their phone number, their prompts, their extension, whatever that might be, right there. So you don't have to always be looking uh, in other places if you need to call somebody from a company. If you need to call Philadelphia American and find out about something in new business, you've got that information right there at your fingertips. You just look up that person in new business and you can call them from there. Works out pretty nice. Again, if you show less information, you're only going to have this little bit right here. And this is good for when you're looking at records and you want to make calls. You'll have their phone number, their name. You know, if you have a marketer, uh, you talk to Jill and you said it was okay for me to give you a call. I just wanted to follow up with you. Uh, you know, that type of thing. If you hit show less information, that's unchecking it now. It's going to give you a whole lot more information. You notice if you want, you can put a photo of the client or the employee or whoever else that might be. As you scroll down here, you'll see you have show spouse other info. If you click on that, that opens up and now it says show spouse. This could be many different options. It could be aunt, brother, brother-in-law, 
you know, the more popular, of course, spouse. You could have a common law spouse, clergy. I mean, it could be a lot of different things depending on, you know, who this is. If this is just a personal friend, I have a lot of friends that are in the ministry. It could be somebody that's going to be a clergy, but it's going to be a personal friend. So this is pretty nice how you can use that as well. Now, if you create a link, in other words, this spouse has their own record just like the other person, you know, just like their spouse or significant other, whoever that might be, their brother, mom, whoever that might be. If you click on this, then you can actually create a new contact. And that will give them the opportunity to be able to connect to their spouse's record or their brother's or whoever that might be, whatever that relationship might be. Once you create a link right here, it's going to have a first and last name. These two fields will automatically disappear. Why do we do that? Because we try to keep things from being cluttered. If you have a lead that is a mortgage protection lead, then right here you can put the name of the company and also the mortgage amount. So that's just a little extra information for a specific type of lead that you get sometimes. But let's say that this person is an agent who works for you or it's you yourself. Then you have what's called agent info. And once you select that, then you can put their national producer number, the resident license number, resident state, and then you can add states just by clicking on them. You can add as many of those as you want. And then when you're done, you just save it. But I'm not going to save that right now. Okay. So I'm going to just hit cancel. And I'm going to show you how these work in real time. So we've got a client, Jennifer Jones. And you'll see there's a lot of information there. And if I click edit, you can actually see the fields open up and you can see what they look like and you can edit them easily. If you hit cancel, it's going to close them off. Now, you'll notice every time when you go over a field to the side, you're going to find a pencil that shows up. And that pencil basically opens up that field so you can edit it. So if I wanted to look at my updates, I would click on the pencil and then I could select whatever updates I need to make in my records. I need to put some more information about contacts. All that does is remind you that you have some contacts that you need to get some more information added in there that you didn't before. Or maybe, like I said, it could be that you want to put some more information in about an opportunity. Or you want to put some information about your commissions for that sale, or you want to upload the document. What's great about this is you don't have to put all of the information in here that this has. I mean, you'll have a place when you get into opportunities and sales where you can put in their beneficiary information and their, you know, their doctor information and their, you know, who their contact people are. You can put anything you want in this. You can put as much information or as little. What's great about this is you can load documents in, and that's right here, and those documents can be attached to your contacts. So if you do an application, uh, a policy, whatever, then you can actually attach that and upload that whole policy into the system. So if you're driving around or you're flying to another country, whatever, and you need to look some information up, you can anywhere you have inf internet or Wi-Fi anywhere in the world, you'll be able to do that. I think it's pretty cool. So if you scroll down, you'll see notes that I made. This C1 just means call one or contact one for me. And looks like, okay, June 15, 2018, 11.40 a.m. And there was uh, voicemail, no message left. Okay, um, then on June 18th, 11.40 a.m., I created an opportunity. It says the note, very interested in the plans discussed. 
So I create an opportunity and here is the opportunity right here. So if I click on this, this is going to open up to my opportunity. But you can see you have a lot of different fields here as well. I'm going to hit edit so that it opens up and you can see there are a ton of different things that you can work in here. Jaguar CRM has well over 500 independent fields. They connect together, they work separately, just kind of depends on each situation. So I have here John and Jennifer Jones Health because it's going to be a health policy. My contact is Jennifer Jones. I have show opportunity overview. I can select that and that gets rid of the opportunity and you'll see right here there's nothing there. But I want to show it. So when you open up opportunity you can see a lot of information in there including the fact that I sold it and the probability percentage is now 100%. As you change this and move this around this percentage changes with it. If you've got an appointment set that's considered 50% probability of sale. If you have a solution design, you're working on something a little bit more than just an appointment. And if you're like a lot of agents, they use phone sales nowadays and they don't go and visit anyone. So an appointment is still an appointment, but it might be over the phone. And then when they get done with that appointment, they set up a time to be able to do a solution design and to build that out. And then they can have a follow-up appointment Mail to sell could be if you've got a person that has a product that you're going to mail them an application, then you can mail that out and they can sign it and send it back. And I don't know what that might look like, but there's different things. You can even use that for email to sell if you want, because a lot of the products are that way. But I'm going to leave this at closed one. You'll see it has a monthly budget of $950. You have a lot of information in there. The campaign, you can create your own lead campaigns. In this case, this was Prospect America 1. The agent is Mark Black. Appointment date and time, June 18th, 2018 at 9 a.m. The close date was June 21st, 2018. So this was a follow-up that they closed that appointment on. Many of my friends work with newer health plans with Philadelphia American and you can see there's the information right here you can deselect that and that'll get rid of all that information you can see the clients current product details you can see you can turn these on and off current company United Healthcare product is major med gold I made that up current premium is eleven hundred fifty dollars a month Current product details, no dental, no critical illness or accident. Dislikes premium going up all the time, getting tired of it. Okay, so I can just shut that. I can also go like this and then hit no plan. And then you'll know right away this person does not have any kind of plan in place. So you can do quite a bit with that. Let's say this is a Philadelphia American. You want to show health policy details. And you can see here, I created one. It has tobacco use is non. You can see all the different things. A three unit plan, a deductible $2,500, spouse other included. And you have all the different information. I created some dummy numbers. Okay. Now you go back up here and you can hit show premium information only. And now all you see, you don't see all those other fields. You just see, oh, okay, the HSP3 premium is 575. Critical illness, illness is 150. Dental premium, 45. Monthly premium, 845. Annual premium of the total plan in all of its add-ons is $10,140. So you have all kinds of different things you can do with that. So I'm going to close that so we don't show those policy details anymore. Get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of that. These are proposal details, and you'll notice here this is non-Philadelphia American product. And you can click on a product, and you can go up here, and you can create a product. It's got the product name, the company, product type. You can even get your commission percentage in advance if you want to put that in there. Not necessary, but it does help you. I'm going to just close that out. So there's the details of that. I'm going to turn that back off. 
But you'll notice because I made this an insurance type of health Medicare, as soon as you do that, that opens up the fields for health Medicare information. So you've got, you can create a health Medicare information here. And this is the name. This is the contact associated with a sale. This would be the opportunity name, like we had, you know, their name, health. Uh, sometimes I'll put life one, life two, whatever. And I do detail this more when I go into the various products. If you go to a life insurance lead, life insurance sale, or prospect, it doesn't have to be a sale, you scroll down, you're going to notice now that it opened up the life info. So you click on that, create life info, and now you got a lot different fields. Face amount, first of all, rating, table rating. We have 1 through 10 and A through J. Tobacco use, underwriting. The type, you got all kinds of type, accidental death, children's term, IUL, you name it. Term period, benefit type, riders purchased, rider details and description of anything you want. One thing about Jaguar, you have all kinds of places to be able to write notes. And then you also have connecting notes that you can put right here. You can create a note and it gives you an attachment to the record. And I'll show you some more about that here in a little bit. So there's all kinds of different things that you can do, and you can explore. There's a whole bunch more. You can show commissions. So you would have a commission information that you would create, and that would be the name, the date paid, the agent, if you're an FMO or if you are an agency, the client associated with a sale, the amount paid, the pay type. Is it a single payment, addition to an original commission? Isn't it advance, back-end payment, bonus, renewal as earned? Is it a split? What's the split percentage? All of that's available. And you'll notice, too, in this that we have a whole separate tab called Finances. And if you go into Finances, you can see that there is an opportunity in there to be able to put in a credit and then that credit could be a commission, and you could attach a commission to it so that you have your commission information right there, and that's really good for your tax records. And you can check this box, and that opens that up. And you can put an estimated commission right there if you want, and you could also put an estimated advance and just do nothing else. Or you could go through and actually create a commission after the sale. So now that we have finished looking at commissions, Let's go back, and all you got to do is this little bolt-on right here at the bottom says contact. Let's go back over to her contact, and you can see all the information that we have. And if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see notes, but you'll also see an opportunity that I created. That's what we just were working right there. And that just kind of gives you an overview of it. You'll also notice that down below you always have an opportunity to create notes. The stage of the sale is closed one. The close date was June 21st, 2018. The monthly premium, $845, and the health annual premium, $10,140. So you have quite a bit of opportunity there. You have a number of other fields that you can put in here. But let me show you the power of our search capability in working with contacts. All right? So let's say that you, you just go up here, these three dots. Let's say that you want to find or you want to call only leads that are working with a specific marketer. And let's say that our marketer is Jill Jackson. So then you just put Jill Jackson right there, and then you hit the magnifying glass, and you'll see here we have now only one, and that's Jill Jackson. So if you had 37, and you got a number right here, it tells you, if you had 37 Jill Jacksons, then you could go through and you could just call those specific leads. Or let's say you want to call off of a campaign. You could hit campaign, select, and your campaign is Prospect America. And again, I have one because I just had Jill Jackson being the marketer for the Jennifer Jones sale, and it happened to be a Prospect America lead. Or let's say that you want to look up 
Uh, there's so many different things. The best time to call. And let's just say you want to just call people that said, call me between 9 and 10 in the morning. Okay. That's pretty specific, but it could be. So you select that and then hit this. And you'll notice it says best time to call 9 to 10 a.m. We have one record here. Now, if I had the full database of records, then you would have maybe seven people that want to be called between 9 and 10 a.m. But this is awesome because when you're making your phone calls, you're not going to have every single person coming up on your list no matter when they want you to call them. Or you could say, you know what, I want to just call people that said that it's okay to call anytime. And then you hit the search and you have zero records because I only have one and that's the one that says 9 to 10. Okay, but that's pretty cool how that works. The other thing, so if you just hit the X, that gets rid of that search. Let's say you're looking for people that are only in a certain city and you want to start, uh, I don't even care what the start, what it starts with. I just want to make sure there's something as a city. So I just select is not empty. Again, click on the magnifying glass and here we have the same record. The city is green. Okay, I just made that up. But you can do this for so many different things. You can go for county. You can go for state. How about priority? Priority is pretty nice. Priority any of two. I want to call all the priority twos. Eh, let's say priority ones, maybe even priority threes. So the only records that are going to show for me now are records that fall into that category of priority one, two, or three. Isn't that cool? So I look at Jennifer Jones. She's the only one showing up again. It's because she's a priority to call for me. And you can set that up however you want to. The search capability within this box right here, I mean, you can just type. I put a town of, or let's see, I, I, I put the word child. And let's just say this record wasn't showing, but you can see right here I have child. So I know that I have a record that says child six. I remember that. So I can just hit that and hit enter. And it's going to show me the contact Jennifer Jones. Because in that contact, this note, child six, is there. That they have a six-year-old child. So if you said, oh, I, I put a note on there that their favorite color was black. Or that their favorite dog was a yellow lab. You can do a search right there, and you'll find that just by going in there. This is a very, very powerful tool. One of the great things about the way Jadewire works is we haven't designed this to try and keep up with the Joneses, so to speak, when it comes to other CRMs. We know Sugar. We know Salesforce. We know a lot of the insurance ones even. But they don't do a lot of the things that ours do. And one thing I will assure you is you're not going to have the fun in working with finding people that fit the criteria that you're looking for. What about you only want to call people that fall into a certain time frame when you receive that lead in the last seven days or in the current month or today? Or you want to put, I only want to call people on leads that I received. And uh, let's say that it was... June 8th, 2018, and just click on that, click on that, go to June 22nd, 2018, and then hit the search for that. And again, we have Jill Jackson. Why? Because our lead was received June 15th, 2018. Why is that important? Because you're not calling old leads all the time, because you're not calling people that have no interest. Here's another great, great feature. I'm going to get rid of all of these fields, all of these filters that I created. Okay, so now all of our, when I hit the magnifying glass, all of our leads are going to show up or all of our contacts are going to show up. But let's say we don't want to call someone who is a deceased person or someone who is a dead lead. So you just go in here and it says any of and you can select them or you can do it easier and you can put none of and you want. OK, I don't want to have personal 
contacts. I don't want to call my friends. I don't want to call agents. I don't want to call company contacts. I don't want to call employees or contractors. I don't want to call a dead lead, and I definitely don't want to, I don't want to call a deceased person either. So I would just select that, and it's none of, in other words, everything that doesn't fit that category will show. So when I hit search, now watch, contact type, client, prospect, client, okay? So if I would have had one of these as a contact type, they wouldn't have shown up in that search. This is big. So let's do one, use contact type again, but now we're gonna look for people who not only are a client already, but they're saying, you know what? I'd like to look at, you already got health insurance with you. Now I want to look at a life insurance plan. So now they're a client prospect. And if you hit this right here, you'll see that no records show. So let me go back to my contacts. And now I'm going to take Jennifer Jones. And I'm going to say that she wants to get a life insurance quote from me. She's already a client. So now I'm going to change that to client Prospect. She's a new prospect. I'm going to save it. Go back to my contact list. Now watch this. I'm going to go to contact type and I'm only going to select client prospect. When I hit the magnifying glass, there's Jennifer Jones. She's now a client prospect. So these would be pretty high priority, right? This would be a priority one for me if I've already got a client and they're asking me for another product, I don't know that anything would be more of a high priority unless it's a low premium and I've got 20 of them that are client prospects. And then I could go and do this. I could say, all right, I also want to prioritize these. So I'm going to say only priority one and priority two. And again, I made her a priority two. So that's the way that will show up. It's just incredible. But let's say that I would have said, I only want to call. I'm going to get rid of that priority. I'm going to click on Jennifer. I'm going to make her a priority three, just for the sake of it. Okay, so I'm going to make her a priority three and update that. Go back to my list. And now I'm going to select priority. And I'm going to put one or two again, and I'm going to search. Now watch what happens. There's nothing there because she's now a priority three. If I would have put priority three in here and add that and search, here she shows up again because she's a priority three. But she's also a client prospect. So this would probably be a priority one anyway. So I would just show her as a priority one instead of a priority three. And again, that's my highest priority contact. So the great thing is you can do as much as you want in here or as little as you want in here. And what I like about this is let's say that I'm going through and I'm calling my contacts. I'm going to get rid of this filter so I have all of my contacts now. And I'm going to go through and start calling my contacts. You'll see there's a little arrow up here. And so you can just go from one contact to the next. Okay. Now, if these were all legitimate contacts, legitimate prospects, then you could go call one after another. And what I like to do is I click on the edit. And then I click on show less info because I don't need to have all that other information. There is notes right there that I do like to have, but all I need to know is her name and her phone number, or if there's a different contact person that's preferred, if it's a business, what type, what name, and that's pretty much all I need, and then marketer, if I wanna know so I can tell them, oh, I talked to so-and-so, and they said it was okay for me to give you a call. But the rest of the information is there. If it's just a pure raw lead, you are not going to have any information down here with notes or opportunities. Nothing will be created yet. And notice here's the place. You can hit plus here, and you can open up and create a document, 
and then you can upload your document and connect it to that contact. So when you look for Jennifer Jones, you can go look at her life insurance policy or her health policy or whatever you want to do. A lot of times this information is available on companies' websites and you can attach that that way. You do not have to put any more information in here than you desire. This is just a great contact manager where you keep track of all of your appointments, all of your calls, all of your meetings. Make sure that you can call the people that you want to call to weed out the people you don't want to call. Again, I put this up against any CRM in the industry for what it's capable of doing in that light. So enjoy working in contacts. Have a great day.